reading this, it sounds to me way a lot like the World Wildlife Fund case where they made this agreement and in time, it one party felt that the side that they had given limited use for went beyond the scope of that. Another story that uh, that Brandon reported, Wesley Isold, who is uh, his band is American Nightmare. He also, um, you know, a, a pretty well known um, musician, uh, has filed a lawsuit in California federal court against Cody Rhodes, WWE, and Fanatics, alleging trademark infringement, breach of contract, and intentional interference with contractual relations. So his group was established in the late '90s. And he has held the trademark to American Nightmare since 2016 for the purposes of music, clothing, and entertainment services. After that, three years later, Cody Rhodes applied for the American Nightmare trademark for the purposes of pro wrestling related activities. And Icehold at that time did um, attempt to block this from Cody because he felt that there would be confusion in the marketplace and he does own the trademark. So it went back and forth uh, for about two years and the two sides reached a settlement in 2021 where they made it very specific that uh, Cody Rhodes could use the name American Nightmare, but his likeness, his name, likeness and wrestling related imagery had to be at least 75% larger than the text that reads American Nightmare and Cody paid him $30,000. So it seemed that from 2021, uh, when that agreement was made, everything was cool. And then he goes to the WWE in 2022. And that is when uh, Wesley Icehold first reaches out to uh, fanatics over a piece of merchandise that he felt was violating the terms, got no response. So he sent cease and desist letters to fanatics and to Cody, and they got a response from WWE. So obviously they were made aware of the issue, um, but it ultimately went nowhere. So Icehold is now uh, filing this lawsuit seeking damages of at least $150,000 as well as treble damages up to $300,000 related to what he believes are trademark infringements on, on his trademark that, again, he did trademark this in 2016. And reading this, it sounds to me way a lot like the World Wildlife Fund case where they made this agreement and in time it one party felt that the side that they had given limited use for went beyond the scope of that. And I think a lot of times in these cases, it's, it's very, it's a very gray area of what's going to be considered, uh, honoring a deal and infringing upon the deal. That seems to what we have here. And I guess Icehold saw, um, Brandon is the one who reported this. And then I guess a lot of wrestling fans weighed in on this. A lot of punk fans weighed in on this. And uh, Icehold <laughs> quote tweeted our story with, <laughs> listen, you fucking dolts. I already own the name. Doesn't matter who you like. They licensed it from me, then violated that agreement. And also doing this like in the style of like lyrics that I could only hope that this is a song at the end of it. American Nightmare, the song. Oh, yeah. It reads like poetry, maybe even a haiku if you could uh, maybe eliminate some of those syllables. It is. Um, I mean, I guess a refreshing sort of response compared to some of the legal um, <laughs> officials, um, you know, letters we, we might get um, from for cases like this. Yeah, the, we, we did not get uh, Wesley Icehold is not going to comment on any ongoing legal matters. No, we got listen, you fucking dolts, which is um, an insult. I, I, I you don't often hear you don't often hear people call um, others dolts. Uh, but all right. Well, um, I mean, it all depends on the agreement that, you know, he had with Cody. If it's as cut and dry as, hey, um, you have to have Cody Rhodes on it uh, on any every piece of merch that you sell with the American Nightmare uh, name. And it has to be 75 percent larger. If that's the case, then it's a pretty clear infringement of that. If these guys reach this deal in 2019 and it is as this lawsuit is laid out like this guy absolutely has has a case and he's protecting his his trademark that he had first and they made an agreement to. Again, this is exactly like the World Wildlife Fund, where it's like they gave a limited use for the World Wrestling Federation. And in time, they expanded with so much international presence and they went far beyond what the what the realities of that agreement were in 1994. And that was a case where they fought it and they lost. And I don't know if that's going to be the case here. Um, and 
he's in the relative uh, amounts that we sometimes talk about. He's not looking for crazy amounts of money either. Um, you compared, know, compared to how much I wondered, like, you know, they might have made off of these shirts. Yeah. I mean, how much I, is he asking for? What's I know the, he the sent, he's asking for $150,000 and then treble ja damages up to 300,000 uh, re regarding this. And I know the cease and desist was sent in April and May, but I immediately went back to a few weeks ago at that Fanatics Fest and they put out that video of the head of Fanatics, Michael Rubin, telling Cody, your stuff sells so well. You're just above mm -hmm. everybody else. And I'm just, I'm thinking of that video and this guy uh, coming across that video. So um, I'm interested to see where, where, where this goes. And I mean, it's... Um, yeah, a case of, you know, protecting your trademark, which if this was the other way around. You'd be certainly advocating for um, the, the, the other person. Uh, certainly, yeah. Again, none, none, none of us have seen the, this agreement that I sold and um, uh, uh, Cody Rhodes have had. So it, it's tough for us to say. But if again, if it's as clear as that, then I think this guy's owed some money. I'm curious. Should to we see send Damian Abraham to California as our correspondent to cover this? Uh, uh, this yes. If this goes to trial. Absolutely. Yes, please. Uh, please uh, we'll, we'll see if he, uh, he could be, uh, be the voice of the dolts. All right. <laughs> Which is all of us, uh, uh, evidently. So We can do a crossover. Turned out a post. Uh, yes. I'm curious to know if WWE will start to move away from the American Nightmare nickname. As a There's result, a very easy way us. to, um, at some point, he morphs into the American Dream. Like, there's an easy... Transfer. But then he wouldn't own that at, at, at all then, right? Like, because who owns, well, I mean, I guess, yeah, who owns the American Dream? Does WWE own that IP? I don't know if it's WWE or if it's the Rhodes family itself that uh, over time has uh, secured that. I, I would have to look that up. Now, can, can we, uh, how about the Atlantan Nightmare? Is that Okay. Work, work? Um, no. Yeah. How about the world, the world Nightmare? I don't know. The Saudi sure. Arabian nightmare. Uh, um, that, might, that might not come off well. No, I don't think that would fit a uh, Riyadh season. Let's go up to uh, Corey. Corey, um, are you are you here to give us a, a breakdown on American Nightmare? Oh God, yeah, um, yeah. You know, so Forbidden Door happened like forty five minutes from my place, and I decided, uh, you know, maybe the Forbidden Door formula has kind of run its course. But what I realized is. Um, we needed to go outside of the purview of wrestling, and uh, in this case, it was the uh, the court of law. Because uh, let me tell you, I was not expecting uh, to see post wrestling uh, report on a guy whose career I've been following since I was like thirteen. Um, Wes, as far as I'm concerned, is like an underground music legend. Uh, American Nightmare is probably one of the most influential hardcore bands in the two thousands. Um, you know, he, he does work outside of that. He's, he's a part of like a very well-known um, dark wave band called Cold Cave. I'm sure Bruce Lord and uh, Kate from Montreal are very well familiar with them. And, and Damien, I mean, Damien's played with Cold Cave before. I'm pretty sure he's played with um, one of Wes's bands uh, in the past. Like he's, um, and, he, and here's the thing, Wes isn't even um, uh, new to the, the, the court of law. He, um, he recently, or not recently, like a while ago, he um, was there something made, with Fallout Boy. It was it was with Fallout Boy. They stole, um, they plagiarized uh, some works of poetry that he did uh, for, I think, believe three songs on uh, one of their albums, and uh, they settled out of court with that. So uh, Wes is not new to this whole. Uh, up oh, there he is. Yep, yep. With his, uh, so, so, so had you been aware of this like legal arrangement between this band and Cody Rhodes? Uh, I had not. Um, I assume something must have happened, and like I didn't hear about it because I mean, you know, American Nightmare. That's a that is a uh, that's that's been his band since uh, the late nineties, and um, mm -hmm. I'm actually very surprised that he. Um, filed the copyright like as late as he did that's something that i wasn't aware of but uh I, here's the thing like looking at how um stringent he was with um how you, you, everything that um he requested from um cody's merch i can only imagine that part of it is very like wes is very much a person who has a uh, cultivated aesthetic um he, he, everything from his tweets uh to um to like the imagery that he uses um 
in his albums and his uh, just his work in general. Um, I can only imagine that he probably wanted to distance himself from anything involving uh, remotely nationalist, let's just say. Mm. Uh, and I mean, with Cody, uh, his aesthetic is very um, rah, rah, let's just say. Yes. Yes. It has, has this received any coverage in like music circles, the story? Um, just like hardcore music circles, like everyone I know um, when this happened pinged me because I'm, I'm the big American Nightmare fan. Um, well, Corey, just make sure they cite us, okay? You're, you're on, of course. You're on the, the, the punk beat for us, okay? <laughs> yes, of course, of course, of course. Um, yeah, no, this is the, the very surreal to see. Um, and I feel sorry for Wes because now he has to be exposed to wrestling, wrestling Twitter and uh, his his mentions and beginning. Listen, I, I, I'm, I, I don't go through comments and stuff, but the limited stuff I saw, like th- there were a lot of people that were very sympathetic to his case. It's like, a- again, yeah. like a judge is going to ultimately uh, determine this. But I mean, if this is accurate and the guy filed for the trademark in 2016 like he's he's doing what you should do he's protecting his intellectual property so i i think that there's a perfectly uh you know it's it it is what it is it's gonna play itself out and and we will see if it even gets that far versus they update this agreement and both sides leave satisfied and and like you said he's not even asking for that much in the grand scheme of things considering how much tko is worth how much fanatics is worth um that's like a drop in the bucket like that's not even like a fraction of like the vince mcmahon like hush money you know um so you you just throw them throw them a bone if you like this video consider joining our patreon the post wrestling cafe multiple bonus podcasts every week ad free shows and access to our full archive otherwise a like and subscribe is much appreciated thank you for watching